Got you, got you. Yo, this is Soul Fire, representing for Region 4, Georgetown, Guyana. We here at the Dallas Reggae Festival 2024, chatting it up with Music Coast. What do y'all say, big man? So your music has been, seen a significant success, including features on Billboard Reggae Top 10 albums and twice reaching the iTunes Top 5 as a solo artist. What do these achievements mean to you, and how do they influence your approach to music? Honestly, man, it's like the achievements make you want to drive for more. Because when I got into the game, I never thought that we would even reach the heights that we have. So being able to, to hit to another level and, and, and seek, find some little bit of success here and there, man, it's really like uh, it, it, it drives you for more, man. It makes you hungry for more and more work, you know what I mean? And it, it, it makes those like long nights and like hard tours and things just all, all feel like it's, it's, it's a good payoff, you know what I mean? Like walk at the gym or something, you know? Right, right. Having been part of the reggae scene since 2002, have you seen the genre evolve in America, and what role do you believe you've played in this evolution? Man, um, bro, I'm just off to the side bubbling, you know what I mean? I don't think that I'm necessarily pushing anything forward or anything like that, but I have seen an explosion of reggae in America, man, and a lot of different avenues, and it's, and it's incredible, man. I love it because... You see the American style doing its thing, but at the same time, there's a lot of Caribbean Americans, man. There's a ton of us. And you see us like bubbling and doing our thing and, and, and representing for our little islands and our little countries, but still coming together as American reggae artists. You know what I mean? And, and so for me, that that's what I think is really exciting. Events like this, like uh, Dallas Reggae Festival, where we're representing for Latin reggae listeners, uh, Pacific Island reggae listeners, American California reggae listeners, Jamaican reggae listeners. You know what I mean? It, it's a uh, uh, that that's what I see is like the most exciting thing happening in American music right now for reggae. And your EP offering was produced and collaborated with critically acclaimed producers El Dusty and Marani O'Hara. What inspired this collaboration? How did it shape the EP sound? Um, honestly, man. Uh, El Dust is the man, bro. He, he reached out to me um, years and years ago, and I've been rocking with his label ever since. And uh, that it, it brought a whole lot of like Central American, you know, Latin flavors to the to the deal. That like, honestly, man, I, I would have never put it in myself, but it, it adds so many elements and kind of like gives it a more global feel, man. A lot of a, like a mass appeal, especially for the area that I'm in, man. You know, what I mean, like South Texas, we have a lot of Hispanic representation, so it's, it's good to give people some kind of like be that rhythm that they can feel and vibe with you know right right and touching back on that same subject what was the process of selecting the artists that you put on there to contribute to that ep well honestly it's like everything that, that i do man it's like I, I go with whatever feels right for the track you know what i mean like certain times maybe we'll build a track just for one specific artist like we did with uh with apache indian on that tune on that album man like I happened to talk to him online, man. He was on IG and, and like had big me up over something. And I was like, big up you, dog. We should do a tune. And he was like, let's do it. So I, I had to like run to my producer and say like, yo, we got to get rid of him together. You know what I mean? Like, so, uh, you know what I mean? It, it, a lot of the game is trying to strike while the iron's hot, you know? Okay. And you've been known to blend reggae with various other genres, including cumbia. How do you approach blending different musical styles and what challenges does this pose? Man, honestly, for me, it's like I've always been a, a, a hybrid artist, man. Like, I'm a reggae, soca, ragamuffin artist, you know what I mean? Dance all, all them things. So, my production can do whatever my production wants to do, you know what I mean? If, if it can be it can be reggaeton, I can do it. It can be roots music, I can do it. It can be cumbia music, I can do it. Because it's all the same type of drum pattern, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 ain't, it ain't no flex, man. So it, it, it's better to try to, like, come out of various style, you know what I mean? And like I said, just give everybody something new to vibe to, you know what I mean? Because maybe, um, you know what I'm saying, somebody from Guyana might not feel something like how somebody from Colombia might. Even though we're neighbors, we touch each other, you know what I mean? But it, it's, it's just a different vibe, you know what I mean? So it's cool to kind of cross borders that way. And as an artist who has toured exclusively, extensively, I should say, how do you do different audiences how do you deal with all these different demographics you deal with so many different ones as you just said even bro i don't my my move is to just be me everywhere i go bro like it's done me really well man because i am who i am man. i'm a real unique story 
So like, if I try to be somebody I'm not, it gets difficult. Then things is tricky. Me, I'm just me everywhere I go, man. You can put my grandma in the crowd. I'm still me, you know what I mean? Like, so I can be in front of a white audience and, and teach you something about Guyana. You know what I mean? And I can be in front of a, a Mexican audience and give them a vibe for Cumbia. And I can be with a, a Jamaican audience and we can hold the dance hall vibe all night long. We can play for Trinis and Bosoka. You know what I mean? But like everything come from a genuine place. So it's, it's never no like, it's not tedious. It's not difficult at all, man. You know what I mean? Like love me or don't. Right, right. <laughs> so do you come from a musically inclined family? <laughs> No, not really, man. Like, uh, I grew up, my father listening to Calypso albums and stuff and, and you know what I mean? Like, telling me not to, to pursue music because I was a waste man thing, you know what I mean? Like, it's just going to be a, a, you know, a, a no money career, you know what I mean? And, and uh, so now nah, they want me to be like a doctor or an engineer or something like that, you know what I mean? But uh, they, they, they support it. They love the thing too, you know what I mean? For, for, for what it is at this point, but... It definitely wasn't what they was hoping for their for their son. <laughs> so, what got you into becoming an artist? Ah, uh, really, man. Um, I used to promote shows and um, host shows and stuff, and I would see artists. And I, you know, growing up where I grew up, we would bust freestyle and just do stuff all the time. You know what I mean? So I always knew I had an inclination f for lyrics. And um, we would see other artists doing their thing, and I just determined, man, that if they was making money doing it, that I could be making money doing it. And, and so I got involved, man, because we would be hosting shows and people would be calling me up on stage and wanted me to, you know, bust up something with their band or whatever. And so it became, you know, I was 19 when I started having my own band. And I mean, because it was just became really evident that it could be something I could do. And be positive, man, you know, stay out, stay out the streets. You know what I mean? Do something that, that I could actually file on my taxes. Right. So who would you say your biggest influences are as an artist? Man, I mean, like, my influences are, are, are vast. It, they kind of depend on how you mean. Like, my, my influences to be an artist is, is, is groups like the Fujis, in all honesty, man. People that were coming up, like, as first-generation Caribbean-Americans or, like, straight-off-the-boat Caribbean-Americans. They were trying to do, like, a hybrid style, you know what I mean? That was the people, like, Apache was a big, Apache Indian was a big influence to me, too, because he was a brown dude, you know what I mean? An Indian, an Indian bridging, you know Right. Look like me that was doing dancehall music with Supercat and stuff like that. Cause like that was that made it seem like oh you could really do it if you got good enough. You know what I mean? Cause like my style and stuff is definitely my my style is more patterned from that Supercat Nicodemus Burabantan era of music. But but really what inspired me to do music was those artists that were them early crossover Caribbean American type of cats. You know what I mean? The reggae community is known for its collaboration spirit. Do you have any dream collaborations that you would love to do in the future? Man, I got a bunch of dream collaborations, bro. But I would say uh, at the top of the list would be uh, a super cat collab. That would probably be like my, my dream collaboration, man. The Don Dada, you already know. Yeah. And, um,. How do you ensure that your music stays relevant and reaches the audiences that you want it to reach? You know, I guess that's that's like, if you are your music, then you just have to stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? Like, like as previously discussed, we don't have to try to put on no ears when I write music. Like, I write music for people that are like me. Right. You know what I mean? So, I'm, I try to stay up with, with, with matters that concern me, and I try to block out matters that don't concern me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It seems like you're a really genuine artist that you just do it because you love it. It doesn't seem like you do it because it was kind of like forced upon you or like it was just like this get quick money idea in your head as much as it was like you knew the game, you knew what you wanted to do, you had your own thing, you had an idea, and it seems like you've been evolving on your own without any sort of major influences on you. You've created the influence. You are the influence. Like I said, man, the vibes is that like... I try to make music that the young me would have wanted to listen to. Right. You know what I mean? When I was like 14 or something and was in like my first year of, of, of high school in, in America and stuff and was like trying to figure it out. Like that music would have been wicked to me. You know what right. I mean? So, so I, I write music like that and I make music like that and I want it to be positive because I want people to hear that vibe and say like, yo, it's cool. Like you can do cool stuff without it being gun, 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 gun. 
you know, degrading women, degrading women, degrading women, nasty talk. You know what I mean? Like, we, we're here for the jokes. We're here for fun music, too. You know what I mean? It ain't nothing like, you know what I'm saying? We don't just do serious music. But at the same time, it have to be nice. You know what I mean? It have to be positive. I have three children, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want them and my grandkids and my great, great, great grandchildren to go back and hear some positive music that their elder had made. Right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they never meet me. But they can hear something positive that their that their ancestor had said. So you know what I mean. It, it, it's a responsibility. And looking ahead, what can your fans expect to see from you going from here on out? Bro, you can't expect me to just keep it moving, man. We got more new music on the way, more of the same. Um, we got a new collaboration coming out with Lion Heights in a couple weeks, probably. Feature my man Cry went over here. Um, we got just dropped the Texas Kush. Uh, music video that's killing it right now man if you haven't seen that yet texas kush featuring six of the greatest caribbean american artists out of texas all on a big ganja anthem available worldwide also on youtube we got the keep shining music video with me cry and uh sergeant remo coming out in a couple weeks as well but man you know i mean we're just gonna keep it going keep it pushing more music uh more vibes coming to a city near you inshallah more fire from so fire yeah bye okay thank you so much for coming through and giving me this time to do this interview brother yeah thank you